Tube of Tunes. I'm Luke and in today's episode we're going to be taking a look at The Puppet Master on The Myth Behind the Monsters. The Puppet Master first appeared in the ninth episode of the first season of Scooby-Doo Where Are You? The Backstage Rage. When Shaggy and Scooby find a violin case full of money they call the gang to investigate. Scooby goes to help a dog in distress, who turns out to be a marionette puppet, only to lose the case of cash. The gang comes to the conclusion that the cash was counterfeit, and decide to head to Pietro's puppets for clues. Whilst there, they speak to the doorman, who has a talent for puppeteering. While there, Shaggy finds a brand new $20 bill, and believing it to be fake, he takes it. Back in the van, Velma deduces it's actually real. Meaning, yes, Shaggy has just stolen $20 from that old man. What a great role model he is. But Fred concludes that the real Bill must be there to throw them off. Really? And they must go back and look around some more. They're able to easily sneak past the sleeping doorman upon re-entry. Eventually they discover a set of empty cases. And after a brief altercation with the puppet master, they find the case in use to print the fake $20 bills. And when they go to alert the doorman, you know, assuming he's not in on it, he's a sweet old man, right? Well, it turns out the sleeping doorman was actually a giant limp puppet. The gang looks some more and find the printing press used to forge the bills. They are then chased by the puppet master and his puppets. Scooby spots him and goes after him. Where they find that, spoiler alert for a 50 year old episode, the puppet master is really Pietro, the owner of the theatre. He had posed as a doorman to throw off the gang from his counterfeiting operation. So, the puppet master was a master of puppeteering. He was capable of puppeteering his lifelike puppets that were able to fool the gang into thinking they were real. His actual costume was pretty lousy, consisting of a cloak over a suit and a cavalier hat. He also wore some gloves and a mask to conceal all of his skin. However, the mask wasn't anything in particular. Just a creepy old man with yellow eyes. And to be honest, between the cloaked collar and the hat, you couldn't really see that much of the mask most of the episode anyway. This is the part of the video where I remind you to hit that like button. It really helps the video out and lets it get seen by so many more people. And if you've not done so yet, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell so you can be notified the next time there's a monster on the loose. So the history of puppetry is incredibly long and if we were to go through it all we would probably be here all day. And so that is why I'm going to focus particularly on marionette puppets, the type used by the puppet master in the episode. So the exact origins of puppetry are muddled with various different accounts of where the art form started. However, there is some evidence of marionettes being used by the ancient Egyptians as early as 2000 BC where they were thought to be used to help knead bread, as well as to display rituals and ceremonies. Although the oldest written records of puppetry comes from the ancient Greeks. It is thought works, such as the Odyssey and the Iliad, were performed to the people using puppetry 5th century BC. In 13th century Sicily, the opera of puppets began to perform representations of Frankish poetry with marionettes. During the 18th century, marionette operas grew in popularity throughout the rest of Europe, with many full-length operas being written for and performed by puppets. And with the rise of film and television, marionettes became even more common, whether they were to portray puppets in the films themselves, or to be used as characters in the show. The puppet master in the episode seems to be heavily inspired by the Phantom of the Opera. From his costume to the setting in the theatre, he even has a scene playing the organ. He's very clearly inspired by the character. Not the musical version by the way, with 17 years too early for that. So the Phantom of the Opera was a pulp horror novel written by Gaston Leroux in 1910. The Phantom is Eric, a man who is said to be horribly disfigured and lives under the Paris Opera House. The novel's portrayal of the character is somewhat sympathetic. He's not the nicest guy, sure, but the book suggests that this might not be entirely his fault. Of course, once Hollywood got their hands on it, most of that nuance would be lost. Now, technically the first film version of the story was in 1916. However, that was a German silent film that has since been lost to time and not much is known about it. Moving on. Now, in 1925, the very first of the Universal Monster movies debuted with The Phantom of the Opera. 
The film chose to portray the Phantom as a monster who, although had some redeeming features, would ultimately be the villain of the piece who must meet their untimely demise at the film's climax. One of the most famous things about the film, of course, was Lon Chaney's performance. That and his makeup, which was kept out of the film's marketing both to surprise and horrify the audience when they eventually saw the movie in the theatre. Of course, being that it was released in 1925, it was also a silent film. But don't worry, because once talkies were a thing, they reshot half the movie and dubbed over the other half and re-released it in 1930. And you thought the Snyder Cup was special. And in fact, the success of this reissue is actually what led to Universal's foray into the monster movie business. But more on that in a few weeks' time. They would, of course, go on to remake this film proper as a talkie in 1943. Can't say the word talkie in an English accent. It just doesn't sound right. Talkie? Talkie? <laughs> Much like the last one, The Phantom was given a monstrous, villainous portrayal. And again, in 1962, a British remake was released by Universal International. Again, monster, rah! So clearly the writers were influenced by at least one of these films to loosely come up with the idea of a cloaked man running around a theatre and then they merely added the puppet element to give them more to work with. Now, although the Puppet Master is, yes, one of the show's original monsters, although I think villain is probably a better term for him, being he wasn't that horrific, his legacy has, isn't as strong as some of the other monsters from this series, partly due to the fact that his design isn't very iconic, and so it hasn't really been reused much throughout the Scooby-Doo franchise over the years. He did, however, appear in the comic One Spook Too Many in issue number three of Scooby-Doo Where Are You? which was just a comic book adaptation of the Backstage Rage episode. But then a complete reimagining of this episode was seen during the first season of Be Cool Scooby-Doo. Here, Pietro the Puppet Master is now Piero the Puppet Master, who works at Samson's Snacks, and is the man behind the company's puppet mascots. When the gang decide to investigate the sorcerer haunting the factory, they discover that, spoiler alert for a four-year-old episode, Piero was the man behind the sorcerer, using his puppet skills to remotely control objects to make it appear the sorcerer was magic. But more on that case in like a few hundred episodes. Fun fact! This episode was actually voted on by fans as one of their favourite episodes of the original series, and so it was included on the VHS and later DVD reissue of Scooby-Doo's Greatest Mysteries. Yeah, I'm not really sure why. I think this is probably one of my least favourite episodes of the original series. I mean, it doesn't have the most interesting villain, and I don't feel like much really happens in the episode. And although I feel like the puppy angle is an interesting one to take, I don't think they really did much with it. I do, however, think this episode was interesting because I feel like the gang were solving a different kind of crime. It wasn't just someone trying to scare people away from an area. There was an actual counterfeiting crime going on. And really, the monster only started to chase them when they got too close to finding out what was going on. There wasn't a monster running around terrorising the town until they got involved. So I do think it is interesting, I just don't think they did a lot with the premise of the episode. Sorry if this is your favourite episode. Thanks for watching this week's The Myth Behind the Monsters. Tune in next time when we take a look at the creepy ghost clown. Ooh. What did you think of the Puppet Master? Did you think the puppet room was interesting to take? Or did you find him to be as plain as I did? Let me know down below. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Cheers. Thanks for watching Tube of Tunes. If you want more from the channel, hit subscribe. If you want to keep up to date with what's going on, follow us on our socials. Hope you liked it. Cheers.